provisions of section 51 of the civil procedure code which speaks about the modes of execution. Let us look into the substantive provision which is section 51 which speaks about different modes of execution and the procedural provision is provided in order 21 which speaks about the conditions and limitations to be availed of when we speak of a, when we are availing of the different modes. It speaks about the conditions and limitations to avail of the different modes of execution. Now, what are the powers of the courts to enforce execution has been stated in section 51. The provision says that the decree holder as soon as he obtains a decree, he can apply to the court for the execution of the decree and when he applies to the court, the court may on his application order the execution of the decree by any of these modes. First of all, by ordering delivery of any property which is specifically decreed. In the decree, whichever property is to be handed over or delivered to the decree holder. Relating to that, the court may pass an order. Secondly, it may order attachment and sale of any property or it may order sale without attachment of the property also. The third mode is the court may order arrest and detention in prison of the judgment debtor so that the decree is executed. The fourth mode is the court may order appointment of receiver for that property and the fifth is in any such uh, other manner wherever the nature of the relief which is granted may require a special uh, mode the court may order execution of the decree by such other manner. Now, here there is a proviso speaking about the mode of execution when the decree is for payment of money. Here when the decree is for payment of money, it says specifically that arrest and detention should not be ordered unless these conditions are satisfied. That is first of all, there is a necessity to give a notice to the judgment debtor to show cause why he should not be arrested or detained in prison. And secondly, the court should be satisfied for reasons recorded in writing. That means, the court should record the reasons that these conditions exist. First of all, judgment debtor is obstructing or delaying the execution and for that purpose of obstructing the execution of the decree or for delaying the execution of the decree, the judgment debtor is likely to abscond or he is likely to leave the local limits of the jurisdiction of the court number 1. Secondly, the judgment debtor after the institution of the suit which was decreed has dishonestly transferred or he has concealed or he has removed any part of his property or he has committed any such act of bad faith which shows that he is uh, obstructing or delaying the execution. So, this is the first condition when arrest and detention can be ordered. Secondly, the second condition is that the judgment debtor should have that means, it should be shown to the court that the judgment debtor had the means to pay the amount which is given by the decree that is at the time when the suit was instituted or he has at that time the decretal amount which he has means to pay the decretal amount and uh, or he has a means to pay at least some substantial part of the decretal amount. And having the means the judgment debtor has refused or he neglects or he has neglected to pay or he refuses to pay that amount then in that case arrest and detention could be ordered. Thirdly, arrest and detention could be ordered when the judgment debtor is bound to account for that amount which is the decree amount, he is in a fiduciary capacity. So, when a person who is in a fiduciary capacity is trying to delay the decree, then for that purpose arrest and detention can be ordered. So, these are the conditions stated in the proviso. There is an explanation to section 51, which speaks about the means that is how the means of the judgment data could be calculated as we said that in clause B the means of the judgment debtor if he is having the means to pay the decretal amount and he is neglecting to pay. So, how do we calculate the means? 
Here it is said that while calculating the means of the judgment debtor, any property which is exempt from attachment under any law which is in force or any custom which is having the force of law, then that particular property which is exempt shall be left out of account from the total means what he is having or total uh, money or uh, uh, assets which he has at his disposal. So, that is the explanation given in section 51. Uh, the exempted property cannot be attached nor can it be taken action against when it is uh, recovered, when the amount is recovered from the person. Now, we come to the question that under section 51 we have the different modes of execution. Whether there is a restriction that only a particular mode of execution should be followed or whether there can be other conditions imposed by the court or whether the court can order a particular mode of execution or who has the option to choose it. So, here the section 51 first of all says that subject to such conditions and limitations as prescribed by the court. So, the court has a power to limit or to impose conditions and limitations first of all and as it was held in Madhav Prasad Singh versus Ram Lochan in 1980 by the Supreme Court the decree holder has an option to choose a particular mode. So, when the decree holder chooses a particular mode, normally the court allows that mode. It is not that the court will say that you adopt a particular mode of execution. Uh, say for example, you, uh, you want to, he wants to arrest or detain the uh, person or the judgment debtor, then relating to arrest and detention that proviso and the conditions apply. But besides that, suppose he wants to attach the movable property or the immovable property, the court cannot uh, tell him to choose a particular mode only, the decree holder has the option. Then whether simultaneous execution can be ordered, that means there are so many modes, whether the court can allow one mode and along with that another mode also. So, suppose he is uh, first of all he asks for the attachment and then he asks for the sale or he asks for attachment of sale of movable property and then for immovable property or for immovable property first and then when it is going on he again atta uh, attaches the movable property. Whether the court has discretion to order two or three modes together along with that that arrest and detention also if he asks for. So, what is the limitation? Here there are certain cases where it is held that there is no limitation which is placed upon the mode in which the decree is executed because the court has a complete discretion to order simultaneous execution. Uh, the section 51 does not say, section 51 does not say that this particular mode has to be adopted or the court has to order that particular mode only. So, discretion must be exercised judicially. The landmark case in this matter is Padrauna Rajkrishna Sugar Works Limited versus Land Reforms Commissioner which was decided in 1969, where the income tax arrears were to be recovered and uh, there was a decree for those arrears and the collector attached the immovable property of the company. This is the Sugar Works Limited. The arrears were to be recovered as arrears of land revenue according to the decree. So, there was a contention by the company that instead of attaching the immovable property, they could have attached the movables first and then if they could not have recovered from the movables, then they could have attached the immovable property. So, they go in appeal for this purpose, where the Supreme Court says that there is no limitation placed upon the mode in which the decree is executed, because once a decree holder applies for a particular mode, he has a, he has a choice, he can, uh, 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 he can take up the other uh, modes also and simultaneous execution can be also awarded and the court can give the order for that purpose. But again the court said that court has a discretion while ordering simultaneous uh, execution the court has to look into whether it is a proper mode which has been adopted. There is another case where Padrona case has also been uh, cited in that particular case Sham Singh versus collector district Hamirpur that is decided in 1993. In Sham Singh versus Collector, the court has said that the discretion must be exercised judicially. The court said that when the tractor was sold and the amount was recovered, there was no account given. So, in such cases when the circumstances are before the court 
and the court has to consider whether simultaneous execution has to be awarded or has to be ordered then the court should look into the facts of the case and where the facts say that it should not be ordered then the court has a discretion to even refuse simultaneous execution this was stated in this sham singh case now as we speak of the discretion of the court we can come to the conclusion that the court can refuse simultaneous execution by allowing the decree holder to avail of only one mode of execution at a time when it is necessary in that particular case though section 51 does not speak of this this was stated in two cases one is anandilal versus ram sarup uh, that is in 1936 and the second case is mono mohan versus upendra mohan here this is a case where the judgment debtor in that particular suit it was a uh, mortgage suit and the money was decreed when he applied for execution two times the case was dismissed for default and the third time he applies for arrest and detention of the judgment debtor now the question was when the land was already attached now the jdr's land that is the judgment debtor's land was attached and he was unable to raise the amount and he said that arrest and detention is not required in this case because there could be a attachment of his movables or immovables where it could be recovered the amount could be recovered here in this case the court said that when the case was three times dismissed for default for the purpose of non appearance of the execution uh, holder that is a decree holder then in that case the circumstances do not uh, award uh, that the person should be arrested besides the fact that his land was attached in another suit and he was unable to pay that amount should be considered by the courts also and then whatever could be recovered when the other attachment has taken place and the land was of a um, greater value it was a, there was a chance for the person to recover by applying in that case for the execution and for the recovery of their dues so in that case it was refused so the court said that in cases where it is possible that the court can refuse simultaneous execution by allowing the decree holder only to avail of one mode of execution at a time so the land could be attached or the movables could be attached and if it was not recovered then they could uh, go for the uh, the other uh, modes and especially when the court orders for arrest and detention then the provisions relating to that particular uh, arrest and detention which is stated in the proviso has to be strictly followed so these are the cases which give us a complete analysis of what is the power of the execution court and what are the modes of execution which are specified under the uh, civil procedure court and how we can uh, come to a conclusion that which mode can be adopted so to summarize this a decree can be executed by several modes which are provided in section 51 and the court provides for the exercise of the choice of the mode by the decree holder and also it provides for the discretion of the court to allow simultaneous execution wherever it is necessary so the choice is the decree holders and he can decide what mode is to be adopted i hope you have learned something from this video If you have liked it please share it with anyone who you think would be interested please leave your comments and i would be happy to reply to them do subscribe to get more information on everyday law and legal studies thank you